Welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's tutorial for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create media grids, specifically how we can create a masonry media grid using Visual Composer. So this is a great way of being able to create a nice looking layout where the dimensions of your images don't all need to be the same, but everything will fit together in a nice block work kind of layout. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I'll take you step by step through the entire process. and At the end of it, you'll be able to get up to speed very quickly with creating these grid layouts. So let's check all that out right now. Now there are two ways you can work with Visual Composer. You can work with the back end editor like we can see at the moment, or we can switch over to the front end editor where we can see what the layout will look like in conjunction with the other elements on our page. And for this example, I'm going to switch over to that mode so we can see what everything looks like as we create it. So let's just switch to front end editor. And that will then load that up and show us the other elements on our page and allow us to start working with the Visual Composer layout in a nice visual kind of way. So as you can see, we have the page layout. I've got my header that's part of my theme with my navigation and so on. And we've got the normal area that we used to work with with Visual Composer. So at this point, I can add an element, text block or template. So we're going to start with add an element. That's going to bring up the normal box and we can now choose what element it is we want to insert into our layout. So you can see we've got post grid and media grid, which I've covered in a previous video, and I'll link that in the description, and I'm in the top right-hand corner now, so you can check that out. But what we're interested in is the post masonry grid, or specifically the masonry media grid. So let's open that up. Let's click insert it. That's going to bring up a dialog box, and it's also going to show us a visual representation of some of the layout for us. So you can see we've got placeholder images. We can set up all the configuration layout and settings and so on. And we can obviously come back in and edit this at any point and edit the columns and the row and so on. And again, if you're not used to working with the front end editor, I've got a video which I'll link in the description and up at the top right hand corner now that will show you exactly how to get accustomed to using this front end way of working. But let's take a look at the options we have available in front of us and let's start building this media grid up. So as you can see, we can choose from any of the three tabs. You've got general item design and design options. We can pull in the images you want to use in this specific grid. And then we can choose how we want to lay things out, the number of rows we want to have or items per row, the gap if we want one, the initial loading animation if we want to animate that, and the type of style that we want to work with. So we've got a range of different options in there. So let's start off by loading a few images in. So if I click on the plus, you can see I can now quickly go to our media library and I can choose some images. If I want to upload some more images, I can do that quite quickly and easily at this point. So let's just upload a few more so we've got a nice range of images to use in our media grid. So I'm literally just going to drag and drop to upload some of these to my server. So let's just drag those into uh, WordPress. Okay, so they're all uploaded now and they're all different dimensions. So we've got some nice sort of randomness to play about with. So let's just choose add images and that's going to add them through into our media grid. So you can see they're all arranged there now. If we want to drag and drop them around, we can quite easily drag and rearrange those into any order we want. So let's take a look at the options below. So you can see we've got the ability to show all the images at once. We can say load more buttons. So we can say we can specify how many images you want to load in any particular time. So you can see we can set that up. Some additional options become available. And we can use lazy loading as well. So as we scroll down the page, that will load them as the page gets further and further down, which is a great way so if you have a lot of images, so you don't have to force people to load everything up in one go. So as you can see, if we choose different options, then more options appear at the top based upon what we choose. For now, let's just check show all so we can leave that as it is. We'll say we want to have a slightly bigger gap in there. Let's go for something like 10 pixels. And let's just say we're going to go for four images per row. And let's just choose an animation. As you can see, we've got the option for no animation. We've got a default animation, or we can use fade in. So let's just choose fade in. Go to item design, and we've got a range of different element templates we can use at this point. So you can see everything is prefixed by the type of grid that you're using. So we've got media grid, masonry grid, masonry media, and so on. It's recommended you choose the ones that are in the right grouping. So for example, we're doing the masonry media. So it makes sense to make sure that we pull in the ones from that specific section. So everything is styled nice and neat and tidy for this particular type of layout. So let's just choose, let's go for border scale. That'll be fine. Design options, you can see we've got the normal CSS box where we can adjust any of the margins and padding and so on, the various elements we're working with. But for now, let's just hit save changes and let's take a look at what this looks like on the page itself. So if I close this down now, you can see there's all our images all being scaled and all sort of sitting next to each other. 
Now at this point in time, I don't really like the way that things are laid out. So I'm just gonna come back in, choose media, uh, masonry media grid, sorry. Edit that. And let's just set that to be, let's go for two, two rows, two elements per row. Save the changes, close that down. And you can see now we've got a nicer looking grid layout. And if we take our mouse over, you can see the effect that we chose is being applied. So we've got a nice level of interaction on there, quite easy. If we want to, we want to change anything on there, we can simply come back into this and we could just click to edit it. Let's just say, we don't want to show everything. We want to say, let's have a, a load more button. And we say, we only actually want display. We've got it in rows of two. So let's just say four items at a time. And we can take a look then what this looks like. So we've got the load more button, so we can now choose how that looks. So let's click on there and you can see we've got a range of different options. We can give it a different title if we don't want to use load more. We can change the style from any of the predefined styles or we can even create a completely custom layout which opens up a range of different options where we can style the button to make sure it's in keeping with the layout that we're working with. So let's just leave that to modern. We leave it rounded, blue's fine. I'm not gonna worry too much about this, but you can adjust it if you want to. You can add an icon to it. You can advance on-click action. Whole range of different things we can do on there. Let's just go to the item design. Let's choose a different one. So let's give it the bordered scale. And let's come down, let's just say, scale with rotation light. Let's try that one. Save the changes, close that down. And now we can see we've got four images. And you can see the load more button now becomes available. If we click on that, that'll then load in the next four images. And you can see now the effect gives us this nice zoom and rotation effect. Quite a nice looking layout. So you can see that everything is now positioning itself nice and neat. Now the first four images we have are pretty much all the sh same shape and size. So let's adjust that for something that isn't falling into that, that kind of layout. So let's come in and edit that again. And let's take this one we know to be a sort of more portrait image than landscape. And let's just drop that into the second image. That'll do fine. Hit save changes. Close that down. And let's give a better example now how the masonry grid actually lays things out for us. So if we scroll down, you can see now things are laid out quite nice and neat and tidy. And if we click load more, you can see the next lot of images and they all slot in nice and neat, like a game of Tetris. Everything sits in there nice and neatly. So this is a great way of being able to display your images using the masonry media grid, which is part of Visual Composer. Now you can do the same if you want to with a post grid. You've got a masonry post grid. So if you, you have a blog entry or a portfolio, for example, and you want to be able to pull in the featured images on there and make those links through to the post with descriptions and so on, you can do that as well. And we'll cover that in its own dedicated video a, bit, a little bit later down the line, but it's very much in a similar fashion to what we've just done here. So have an experiment with this. See if you can find a nice way of laying out the images on your layout. I think it's a great way of working and making everything look in a nice visual fashion where you don't have control over all of the image dimensions and you want to make everything look nice and neat and tidy. So once you've finished doing your layout, don't forget to hit that update button in the top corner to make sure that you save the changes and then you can jump back into the normal editor and the back end of WordPress and carry on working. I hope you found the video useful. I hope it's something you can use in your development of your website. If you did find the video useful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.